Hi everybody and welcome to episode 6 of Scapper 2020, the series. So today, yes, we are doing the SMS Karlsruhe. So this was the second dive of day one, which for us was the Sunday. Um, so a um, bit of a reverse profile. As I explained in the last video, we got a couple of divers that uh, weren't dive fresh. So we wanted to do uh, a shallow one first so they could sort of get back into the groove of it. Uh, and then we did this one second, which again is pretty shallow at only 28 meters. Um, but it is a bit of a reverse profile before anybody starts uh, sounding off down in the comments. So here she is, the Carl's Ruhr. Uh, which I think is the, the correct way of pronouncing it and uh, yeah, she's a light cruiser. She was the only one of her class to be successfully scuttled. Uh, the other two apparently um, were beached and you can read all about that here. So this is um, the Scapaflow website that I've pointed you to before. So check it out. It's very good. Um, if not, just Google it and it comes straight up. So here she is, uh, pretty boat, a um, couple of stern guns um, that are missing. That I'm assuming they've been salvaged. Um, she's got obviously our main armaments towards the bow and then she's got some slightly smaller guns either side of the bridge here now this bridge is all sort of collapsed and fell away uh, and can't see one of these but the other one we can see but you've got to go rooting for it so we'll have a look at that um, so let's have a 3d look uh, sorry look at the 3d wreck and uh, I will show you the way we went okay so this is pretty much as she looks now so we'll knock off the labels and we started our dive from the stern so um, the stern shot line comes off about there somewhere okay and then we come down the shot line and we drop off here you'll see at the start of the video and uh, we have a bit of a minute or two here just checking kit making sure everything's clipped on bubble check yada 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 um, you'll see here there is loads of what looks like bits of wood and they are bits of wood so that's the remnants of the teak decking uh, which is quite interesting you know that's done well to last uh, over 100 years um, so yeah that's pretty cool so let's uh, sorry I'm skipping between tools here so what we then do is we skip over the hull and then down this side because we're going to have a look at this A-frame here if you can see it which is the only one that's left in Scapper. All the rest have rotted away and fell off or been crushed or whatever. Um, so this is the only one that's here. Uh, so we come down, have a look at this, uh, both sides, and then we come back uh, and then round the uh, stern of the boat. So you can just see this little black blob here. If I just get rid of that again, see it? Yeah, that's the stern anchor. Um, and um, when we get there, there's something quite cool from a squidgy point of view, not a, not a wreck point of view, unfortunately. <laughs> You're going to get some squidgy education on this dive. Only a little bit, though, so bear with me. Um, but yeah, it was quite cool. I'd not seen anything like that before. Uh, so we'll have a good look at the anchor, or not, as the case may be. So coming around onto the deck side of the boat, I mean obviously she's on the starboard side, um, we carry on from the anchor around, you'll see this stern capstan, okay, and then we have a bimble up and across here. Now I've sort of fast forwarded most of this guys because this is, is just finning and there's, you know, it, again it's the scrapyard bit, you know, these deck plates are sort of all heading south or they're folded over. Um, if we just scoot along a little bit here this is the blast damage where they've been in and um, you know got the turbines and probably the lateral torpedo tubes as well because this one did have some torpedo tubes but uh, there's there's a big sort of hole in the side over there um, so uh, yeah and, and again it's a bit of a junkyard I mean you can see these 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 deck plates there they're just sort of folded over so this is all pretty what i would determine boring now i know the proper true wreckies out there will like gasp in horror that i dared say that but for me it, it's not not the interesting stuff and it's certainly not the stuff that emily the skipper told us to look for so we shall skip uh, merrily along towards the front of the boat towards the bow where there is much more cool stuff to see so yeah, there's the boiler rooms, um, but the, the, the really interesting stuff starts starts here where the remains of the bridges. Okay, so you can see all the bridges sort of collapse down. Now, there was a gun either side. Now, I don't know where this one's gone, uh, but you can just see here, if I just draw a little nearly around it. So here is the back end 
of one of the um, sort of bridge guns and you can see the breach quite clearly. Um, the, the shield and the barrel is sort of buried under the bridge structure um, but you can see it and I'll, I'll point it out more as we get to the, to the video so that was kind of my first big scapper World War gun, uh, World War One gun so that was quite cool. Okay, uh, moving immediately forward to that, you come to this sort of, to me, the, the main bit of the wreck, or certainly the most recognisable, and that's this bit here, which is the control tower, or as Emily refers to it, the conning tower, so I'm not going to argue with it, if it's a conning tower, it's a conning tower, so big cylindrical structure, really, really chunky armour, uh, quite an impressive uh, sort of lump of metal, so we will go and investigate that. Once we've done that, we just let me get the right tool so i'm moving there we go uh once we've done that we move sort of more towards the bow now i'm just going to take a second to explain this to you because if not it looks a bit weird so the deck has split right along the length of its middle there and all these plates and everything attached to it is very much heading south okay they've all sort of slipped down so if i clear this again you can actually see so there's one gun, there's the other gun, and so this gun should be up there, and this gun should be probably, you know, more towards where that is. So you've got one here on the seabed, and then you've got one there, and they're effectively stacked behind each other. So you've got one here, and this, this is sort of trying to squidge its way behind this one. Uh, it's even more obvious when it, you look at the anchor capstans here because you've got one there and one there and then this one is sort of really tucked behind there and you can see that really clearly uh, in the video so that'll become a bit more obvious but that's what's happened is, is the deck sort of sliding down. Uh, so you see these little ribs here? So these have been exposed with the deck sliding down and um, if you remember off the previous video we went and had a look at the gear mechanism for the capstans. Well, again, all that's exposed because of this. So we'll go and stick our head through uh, and we'll have a good look and see what the differences are between the F2's mechanisms um, on the previous video that was all electric and these that are driven by steam. So we'll have a look at those. Okay, moving around now, getting towards the end of the dive. Um, we sort of, once we've done at the anchor capstans, we come back around here so I scoot up the hull a little bit um, across the edge of the hull uh, and then we come back down knob around for a second or two here before calling the dive <coughs> dive times up so we come back towards um, this here which is the conning tower and then the sort of bow shot line is tied there and you go up so that's it that's pretty much the plan for the dive guys so uh, let's crack on with it shall we So here we are, and what a glorious afternoon it turned out to be. So this is uh, the deck hand for the week, a uh, chap called Duncan, uh, very nice, uh, helpful, um, just helping me up. Now, I need to explain the goggles, because I'm bound to get somebody asked me. The goggles are a COVID thing, okay, they're to stop me uh, accidentally spitting in his eye or something, but uh, that's what they're about. Uh, it's not because it's super windy or anything else, <laughs> they're just COVID related, so... Um, yeah, here we are, uh, just coming up on the shot. Um, they all seem to be these sort of little cheap plastic barrels and a little sort of um, trail boy. So uh, here we go.
So here she is, the uh, sexy arse, as uh, Emily says, of the uh, Carl's Ruhr. Uh, you can see all the, the sort of the little bits of uh, wood uh, sort of still attached. So yeah, that's the teak decking I was talking about. And again, you, you'll just see this all over the place. So um, yeah, I mean, you definitely see why they use teak. It lasts. <laughs> Okay guys, so here we are, Squidge fan uh, head coming on, so if you look to the left, and I was pretty preoccupied with this, so uh, I apologise that I've not got the best footage, but there's the A-frame anyway, um, so uh, that's all good for the wreckies, but look at the amount of uh, seven-armed starfish down there, I mean there are big starfish at the best of times. Uh, but there are literally thousands and I was a bit puzzled as, as to why there were so many. I've never seen that many before, but anyway, here's the A-frame uh, You can just see a bit of the bearing case and again, this is the only one that's left in Scapa So uh, we, we had to go and have a look at this uh, You see Dave's uh, loving it um, so uh, Apart from that on sort of the dark side of the wreck or the whole side There's not so much to see but look at all them starfish man Now we were also told to look for the rudder and I'm not sure if that plate in the bottom sort of right hand side of the uh, shot there is the rudder. It doesn't look like a rudder to me, it looks more like a, just a plate that's fallen off but uh, yeah, if, if that's not it then uh, I don't think we really saw it. Yeah, I, I'm still mesmerised by this starfish. I mean, I don't know what a, a collection of starfish is called, but uh, I think horde is definitely the right word for it because that's what it reminded me of. There was just a horde of them. Okay, so this is it. We're, we're right at the stern of the boat here. And um, just in the... Oh, I was just going to say, so there, there, just in the centre, you know, you see that fuzzy grey mass. Now, that is the anchor, and I was kind of like, why is it fuzzy? Um, and then it suddenly dawned on me, A, what all the big starfish are doing here, and B, what all the fuzziness is. So, the anchor is absolutely covered in uh, little black brittle stars. And um, the seven uh, armed starfish basically chow down on them. So, these are the little puppies that is the food and it's all over the anchor and uh, yeah the big ones just chasing them up so they'd all sort of climbed up the anchor to uh, avoid getting eaten I guess and uh, that's what made it look fuzzy but uh, yeah I think that's what it was so uh, you know it's it's a, a feeding frenzy in slow speed I think you can say so anyway enough of the squid stuff for the moment um, so we're just moving forwards now towards the bow uh, and the, again the decks off to our left and uh, so we're kind of back where we started the dive you know, I think we just glance the shot line there um, so uh, yeah teak deck in uh, a few mooring pillars there uh, there's the stern anchor capstan and you know huge much bigger than the one um, that we saw on the F2 yesterday um, for those that want to know, the little square holes in the top are where the um, crew could stick um, hunks of wood in um, to uh, turn it manually if the uh, steam mechanism packed in uh, and I bet that was a, a fantastically fabulous job um, but that's what it's there for so um, a fair bit of fast forwarding now guys because like I say this is just um, yeah like I say the, the, the scrapyardy bit so uh, I'll come back to you when we get to something interesting Now I think coming up in a second might actually be the first gun but um, uh, Dave sort of signals here but there was no actual barrel that I could see but that definitely looks like a shield doesn't it? Um, but anyway I didn't go down and have a look at that one so it wasn't my first gun. <laughs> we'll get to my first gun uh, in a second.
So just to the right of the picture now, guys, you can see um, a couple of boat davids. Uh, the next point of interest, um, or if not interest, at least um, uh, a marker to uh, let you know that you're, you're heading in the right direction. So um, quite interesting that sort of one uh, goes off to the right and then the other one goes off to the left. Uh, I don't know if that's because um, they were actually extended at the time when the ship went down because obviously the crew had to get off the boat so you would imagine they would have uh, lowered their boat off these davids and you can sort of imagine it rolling over can't you know and spreading kind of thing so uh, but yeah you, you know uh, we shall see many more davids uh, over the next coming videos and uh, certainly more interesting ones than these that are just sort of laid flat on the side but it's a thing anyway <laughs>
really chunky bit of metal this is um, you know uh, it's 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 well armored so uh, we'll, we'll stick his head in here and you can see it's full of cables but uh, again I'm just uh, trying to show that that's, that's that's you know really big really big uh, you know really thick so I would say a good 12 inches there ladies wouldn't you <laughs> come on we've all done it um, but uh, but anyway you know it's um, yeah it's 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 quite interesting I mean obviously there's lots of cabling in there because um, I think the, you know it's the control tower so they would have fired the guns and everything from in there the hole at the top I'll talk about in a second because that was quite interesting and I certainly learned something um, when uh, Emily was giving the brief um, that I didn't know before so uh, we'll, we'll scoot around to there and have a look but uh, it's definitely I mean when all the rest of the ship has rotted away this is going to be the only bit that's left it's that substantial So yeah, um, as I'm coming around to have a look at the hole, I think my buddy Dave has uh, got a bit bored of me uh, spending so much time looking at this and has sort of swam off and is having to swim back and uh, come and try and fetch me. Uh, but we're not done here yet, so we'll bore Dave for a little bit longer. So yeah, this is the um, hole that we're going to have a look at on the top of the conning tower and um, I learned something here, so um, hopefully you will too. Uh, but this hole wouldn't have been a hole. It would have had a rangefinder on top of it, which is this mechanical thing with, with two arms on it and then a lens in each uh, end of the arm. And through the wizardry of... There we are, there's one. Uh, through the wizardry of geometry and mathematics, by using that, they could tell how far the enemy was away. So that's why it called a rangefinder. Aha! Logo! Subscribe! Um, so yeah, so that was uh, pretty cool. Now, Emily said that none of the lenses have ever been found off any of the ships, and she thinks the reason why is that... Um, at the time of the uh, First World War, Germany was much better at making the lenses than what we were. Um, basically, when the ships were interned in Scapa Flow, uh, they didn't want us nicking any of the lenses, so took them out beforehand, which I guess was fair enough. So we're heading towards the bow now, and very shortly we are going to see um, the big guns on this boat. Um, I'm just doing a 360 there, I'm not quite sure why. Probably trying to get out of this cloud of dust. Uh, it's been kicked up, but uh, yeah, there we go. So there's the breach of one of the um, big forward guns and uh, the, the shield coming around the side. Uh, and again, um, I didn't know this was noticeably bigger than the last one, but again, it's a big, impressive bit of metal. Um, I mean, you know, just, just look at the size of it against, against the, the size of my hand. And I've not got dinky little hands. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, really, really impressive bit of kit there's the um sort of mounting shaft and sort of the remnants of deck that's still attached to it uh where you can see it sort of slid out and we just sort of come over the top and have a look <laughs> just seen the distance towards the top of the screen now there's the second gun um, I think I uh, try and get some shots of it from some sort of this distance to try and get the whole thing in because again these things are massive so you've got to be quite far away so um, hopefully you can see that um, but that's the uh, sort of the, 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 the starboard side gun that's sort of slipped down and, and landed on the seabed now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to swim forward a little bit and then turn around to try and get a shot of the barrel of the gun that we've just looked at. Uh, and the barrel of this gun sort of tries to disappear, like I say, behind um, some some deck plating. Um, so, oh, there's a Dave. Okay, so we're we waiting for him to uh, move out of the way. Come on, Dave. <laughs> to the there we are you know, so there's kind of the barrel and you can see it's sort of pointing down in towards the deck so again as that deck slips that's going to be covered up and you're not going to be able to see that so but look at all the brittle stars over everything this is why i don't like brittle stars they literally carpet everything to the point where you can't see it so i'm all for the seven leg starfish get in there munch a lot of them <laughs> Thank you. 
So just in front of me here are the, um, oh, just turning the video lights on. Come on, let's go, 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 go. Uh, yeah, so uh, right in front of us here are the uh, ribs where the um, uh, anchor caps and bases are. And I thought, right, uh, I'm going to get in there uh, and get some shots before it all gets kicked up. So uh, let's go and have a look. So yeah, quite interesting this one. So obviously you can see the shaft coming down. Uh, and again, I think in a minute I'm gonna do a little drawing uh, just to explain what's what. But basically you've got the manual turning wheel. Uh, you've got some tread plate in there. You can see like the plate with all the holes in. It's just not in shot at the moment. There we are at the top of the shot. Uh, handrail. There you go, you can see the tread plating. Uh, and then there we are. So that's the tread plating, your handrail, your manual turning wheel. Then over here, there, if you can see it, is a grub screw so um, a steam turbine would have span that shaft span the screw and obviously um, turned the shaft to uh, wind the anchor up so quite a bit different from the um, f2 one and certainly more substantial uh, and quite an impressive thing so definitely if you're doing this wreck stick your head through there and have a look a bit of a funny bit coming up here now because I turn around and oh look Pontefract walking clubs there and there's Dean stood on the wreck like bloody action man look with his camera so uh, <laughs> so at the minute he's getting a right bollock in the water for not being in trim because he's one of my students and you know it's, it's just not cool having your students so uh, I'm not going to play the sound that, that I am because all you'll do is hear me chuntering in the water um but uh, yeah, I mean, I spoke to him afterwards, and he swore blind it never happened. So uh, video evidence there, Dean. Um, you know, keep your trim, mate. Keep your trim. Um, but uh, there we are. A bit, bit, bit of light-hearted banter there. But uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so moving on, um, here's the anchor capstans, and hopefully you can see that. See, there's one on the right and there's one on the left, and the one on the right is definitely trying to get behind and under the one on the left. Um, so you can see what I mean about the, the deck splitting and it's sort of folding down on itself. Um, the anchor chain on these, mate, I've never seen chains as big. Uh, just look at the size of that. And, and again, this is a little boat when you get to the you know the big battleships later on in the week that you know they're, they're bigger again but um it's just the scale of these things more than anything uh, and to be frank um this is by nowhere near the, the most impressive uh, of the boats um you know we'll discuss that in, in later videos which one was my favorite um but uh, this one wasn't it <laughs> uh this one's an okay dive um but uh, but again you know just the scale of the engineering of these things is, is pretty impressive So as I said before, I'm not a brittle star fan. They're horrible little beasties that cover everything up. And uh, David rudely uh, kicked over this um, seven arm star. Well, this one's six and a bit, uh, to be fair. Uh, he kicked it over, so I thought it only polite um, to uh, pop him back over on his uh, never ending um, pursuit of a uh, brittle star meal. Uh, so we rescued him anyway and, and put him back over. <laughs> And we're moving up the edge of the hull here like I said before and you can just see all the decks below have sort of collapsed out um, so this is where, where, where the top deck should be attached to uh, and we're just uh, moving along 
Um, and uh, I think we're sort of signaling to Dave, what are we going to do? And he sort of says, let's have a just bimble about here for a minute. Uh, so this is quite good because I can introduce you to a few more of the divers because you will be, uh, well, we will be bumping into them uh, underwater a bit more. So uh, that's good. But again, this is just sort of the, the scrapyardy bit. Nothing really to tell. I think we end up back at the... Um, bridge gun again just another brief look at that and then it sort of dive times up time to go and we uh, head off back That's the shield uh, looking the other way of this um, bridge gun. Uh, there's the breach again, and then I think at this point we've sort of decided, right, okay, well we've uh, we've had a look around and we've seen that seen most of the stuff that the, the dive plan called for. So uh, we're going to head forwards again towards the conning tower, uh, knowing that the um, shot line is is just uh, at the top of that. <laughs> do we have here i recognize that torch oh it's the purple headed monster hey <laughs> so this is neil who i did the purple uh spaz cam for uh so this is its first outing actually so i'm glad i got some footage of it um it looks not too bad underwater so it looks blue nearly matches his gloves and this is nat um now nat's been diving she's about 14 and uh she's disgusting i hate her um because uh, she uses uh, very little air i think a sack rate is something like three liters per minute uh, she'd not been in the water for nearly a year and uh, straight away she jumped in perfect breathing rate perfect trim perfect finning um, she's an absolute delight to dive with so uh, yeah really really if ever there's a demonstration that women are far better scuba divers than men uh, Nat is absolutely it so if you ever get to dive with her you definitely should but uh, just make sure you take plenty of air because she will embarrass the hell out of you on your air consumption <music> Okay, so here's the shot line, uh, and that's pretty much the end of the dive. Now, do bear with me, because um, the adventure's not over yet. Um, oh, yeah, you see the guy in the orange hood? Okay, that's Al, a.k.a. the Slippery Eel. Um, underneath, again, you can see Neil with his helmet and massive rebreather lightsaber torch. Um, that's little Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi. Yeah, yeah, we're going up. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, cool. Um, let's have another little nosy. Right, the guy just to the left of Neil is in a shot now. Um, you'll see he's got a massive grippy camera, uh, and that's the corkster, or aka corky. So, yeah, a few more of the dive crew there. So, yeah, like I was saying, the adventure's not open. Do you know what? Is it just me? I've been diving for years, but I still find the bubbles pretty. I could literally sit and watch them all day sometimes. Um, but anyway, I digress. So yeah, again, for the third time, uh, the adventure's not over because I'm going to talk to you about shot lines. Now, I am not, I repeat, not a fan of coming up and decoying on a shot line. Uh, the reason I'm doing it is because my buddy Dave said he preferred it and I'm a nice buddy. Uh, and uh, if that's what he needs, then I'm happy to go with that. But I much prefer... Um, bagging off and uh, doing my deco there and uh, there's a couple of reasons for that both of which are going to become apparent uh, in the next few seconds so yes here's the first indication of what's going to go wrong <laughs> there a rebreather diver not one of our rebreather divers um, so uh, the more experienced of you out there uh, are pretty much going to know where this is going um, but uh, anyway let's uh, let it play out So we're heading on up. I think we do a quick turn, quick stop at 12 meters because uh, Dave's computer uh, insists on that. Um, I've got mine set slightly differently, um, but uh, we do a quick stop there and then we head on up to uh, six meters. Uh, where the second problem with a fixed decoming on a fixed shot line becomes apparent, uh, and what you'll see is uh, in a few seconds. 
uh, Dave will be sat there at six meters and um, he starts pulling, <laughs> pulling the shot towards him uh, and you we, we end up with meters and meters of sort of slack lines here we go look so he's pulling it pulling it pulling it pulling it yeah a bit more a bit more now he's made a fatal mistake by being that side of the shot to be honest with you because if you want to hold your your depth uh, and be pretty static you need to be holding the bit that's attached to the boat underneath you so you don't get pulled up so again uh, experienced divers are going to know what's going to happen in a second um, because Dave sat there holding onto the line at six meters but with all that slack underneath him. So yeah we've uh, done the deco and I'm just uh, slowly uh, heading up to the surface and uh, I'll look up in a second and uh, Dave's, Dave's all the way up there so I'm like what are you doing up there Dave uh, and uh, again the experienced of you are going to know what's going to greet me momentarily So yeah, you guessed it, uh, another boat come and dropped all their divers on, uh, not very good ones, but like, go on mate, go on, get on it, go on, there you go, there, you, no, okay, but anyway, it, it's what a static shot line's for guys, it's to get back down to a boat, not really getting back up to a boat, it, it's just risky if you've got deco to do, because it's very easy to pop your, uh, pop your deco ceiling uh, as somebody accidentally pulls you up while they're trying to come down so uh, it's what it is so yeah if you want to be super safe and fine then you know i would definitely recommend um you know using your smb in real which is what i'll do from sort of wednesday onwards for reasons that will become clear so again that's it guys um that's the Carl's Rue done. Uh, we get picked up by the boat now, a cup of coffee, take it back to shore on our first night in. So please like and uh, comment down below. Share this video and press that little notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any more upcoming videos. Uh, if you've got any comments, please leave them below. And uh, dive safe, guys, and I will see you on the next video.